and the related cost of goods sold, the expense is going up. Uh, so the new thing then is the sales tax. Now, the thing with the sales tax is you can imagine the sales tax. People get confused on how the sales tax is supposed to work because they, they start to pay sales tax and they say, well, why don't I have a sales tax expense account on my income statement? And the, re the, 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 the reason is that in theory, the sales tax is being imposed on the customer, not on you, the business. Therefore, you shouldn't include sales tax in revenue. In other words, you can imagine a situation where you say, hey, look, I'm just gonna record cash of 1,000, uh, 24450 and revenue of 1,24450. And then when I pay the sales tax, I'll have an expense of $104.50 revenue minus expenses will, will meet in net income in the same situation uh, of the 1,100 in the same case, it, it would be just like, it would, would be the same bottom line. Why wouldn't I do that? In other words, and the, the rationale is that that isn't, isn't revenue, the 10450, although you're collecting it, you're just the tax collector. It's actually not revenue and therefore shouldn't be on the income statement. We're gonna put it on the balance sheet as a payable. And then you, when you pay it, you're not gonna have an expense. You're just gonna decrease the payable. That's how they want to have it set up. Now, of course, that gets a little bit more complicated when the sales tax stuff is being taken care of by the, another by the Shopify store. So this is another wrinkle in our system here. So let's say, let's save it and close it and see, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And let's go to the balance sheet, <clears throat> run it. And we can see that now in this payments to deposit account, we have multiple items in here for, we're gonna just imagine their cash or whatever, or a credit card, for example, that we're, we're, that we're charged on it, that we need to put into the checking account at some point. The other side's going to revenue. If I go into revenue, let's run this revenue. And so now we've got this second uh, sales invoice that happened and the revenue accounts are here, but it's not including the sales tax in revenue. The difference between those two, if I go back on over, is back on the balance sheet. Let's run the balance sheet. Did I run the balance sheet before? It's back on the balance sheet and uh, it's under the payable account, payable account. Here it is. I was looking for sales tax payable, but they put it under, under the name of the department that you need to pay. Possibly that makes it easier when you have multiple sales tax, but there it is. It's on the, it's on the books as a liability because when you pay the sales pack tax, you're not going to have an expense. You're going to decrease the liability. And then of course, inventory, that's the new thing. Inventory went down uh, just like before with the transaction. So inventory is decreasing and the related cost of goods sold is on the P to the L. Cost of goods sold went up. The impact on the income statement is the income not including sales tax minus the cost of goods sold. And if I go back to the balance sheet, our inventory 9120 matches our subledger over here 9120 tracking the quantity and the uh the total asset value that's over here on the balance sheet okay so there's that added wrinkle with the sales tax now obviously if you're in like a shopify situation or an amazon kind of situation the question is are you subject to sales tax and in which state are you subject to sales tax if you have like an amazon for example then the platform itself might uh, be responsible for a lot of the sales tax. We might dive into that more later, but that could make things easy, but some states might not have that be the case. And then the question is where, you know, are you subject to sales tax uh, in, the, in the place of your physical location, but now you have an online location. So does that mean you're subject to sales tax in, in different <laughs> states because sales tax is different per state. So that gets messy, but just the logistics of collecting the sales tax right now is what we want to think about because obviously the sales tax needs to be collected at the point in time that the sale happens which now isn't going through quickbooks but rather is happening on the shopify or amazon uh, type of level so so when dealing with sales tax we have to take that into consideration when we're drawing the information in 
from an Amazon or Shopify type of platform into our, our QuickBooks system and make sure that we're still managing properly the sales tax. Now, one way you can do that is to try to say, well, I'm gonna try to pull in every transaction and create a sales receipt for every transaction, turn on sales tax within QuickBooks and let QuickBooks calculate it and so on. But again, that becomes kind of redundant. It becomes kind of tedious because, and and it could weigh down your system because all that stuff has already been done to on the Shopify to some level. And so do we really need to pull it all in again? That might be too much, too overwhelming of a job to do. So in other words, we're probably not gonna use the whole sales tax widget thing down here to process our sales tax possibly, but rather hopefully use the other platform to help us to manage the sales side of the of the of the sales tax and then summarize that information in some way into our our quickbooks system in a more simplified method than trying to just pull in you know every every transaction now the other issue the last piece that we're going to talk about right now is the fact that now i've got this amount in payments to deposit so if i think about this from a flow chart we made sales receipts. We didn't deposit them directly into the checking account. You can imagine like a situation where you have cash, but the same thing happens with credit cards and other payment processors. That being, if you have multiple sales that happen during the day and you're at a cash register, then you don't want to put them directly into the checking account each time you make a sale. Uh, because if you made five, you know, 10, $5 sales, then you would have a bunch of $5 amounts in your checking account. But when you deposit the money into the bank, you're gonna to walk to the bank with a full lump sum deposit and put that into the bank. Therefore, it's gonna show up on your bank statement as one number, not you know, 10 $5 amounts. So, so what you wanna do is make sure that you group the deposits into your checking account in the same fashion as they will be represented on your bank statement so you can reconcile. When we pull the information in from a Shopify, we have a similar situation. If I try to pull every transaction in one at a time, make a sales receipt of each one of them, and I deposit it directly into the checking account, I'm gonna still end up with the same problem as we would in an on-ground store, meaning 